Let's go into all the content of our agenda, but now let me explain to you how you can move around our event Photo Prosa 2021. If you see on the left side of the screen, you will find the menu. That's where all of the agenda is, and you can go back to the lobby of the event every time you need to. Every presentation and panel will be available both in Spanish and English so that you can choose. Once you go to every room, you can go to the broadcasting where you will find on the right the field in order to share your questions with the speakers. So try to make the most out of this opportunity. We want to hear from you. Every time that every session is done, please let us know about your questions. And finally, in the stand area, you will be able to find all other presenters and you will be able to visit them in order to do some networking and to get some content. So this is in order to make the most out of our Photo Prosa 2021. We will be here until 11.30. From now on until 11.30 in order to have all the information that our speakers and panel members are here to share, but also for you to visit them through all of these instructions and visit all of the stands that we have available for you. Let's get started. Welcome to room B, but let me remind you what we have next door in room A. We have the presentation, New Telecommunications Infrastructure for the Financial Sector by Jose Reynoso, the Commercial Director of the Enterprise Market from Telmex. So you can choose between both. In this room, in room B, we have the presentation, The Importance of Correspondent Banking by Luis Arellano, Correspondent's ATN Deputy Director and New Technologies from HSBC. But let me tell you a little bit about the 15 years of career that he has had in HSBC because Enrique Arellano is an expert in financial and strategic planning as well as design and coordination of projects, both local and international. He is the Deputy Director of Correspondence, ATMs, and New Technologies of HSBC, and he's responsible for creating intuitive transactional flows and CRM models that strengthen the experience of customers. Thank you so much, Luis, for joining us. You have the floor. Thank you, Vicky, and good morning, everyone. Thank you for your time to devote to this session. Today, we're going to talk about the importance of banking correspondence. Uh, Correspondent Bank is a commercial establishment in a partnership with a banking institution which carries out or may carry out transactions on behalf of the bank itself. That means that any user of the bank or any user actually can go into these establishments to carry out this type of transaction. And we'll talk a little bit about what types of operations can be done and where. In 2011, the uh, rules were set for carrying out this type of services so that banks could hire these third parties to carry out financial operations where the main objectives, there are several, but we'll talk only about the principal ones, are first of all, to bring the banking system to remote populations. Meaning that from any part of the country, for example, in Mexico, whether there is or is not a bank as such, users could do their transactions through third-party entities. Second point, to increase the points of access to financial services and products. To grow, grow in an agile way as far as uh, banking infrastructure in the country. There's no need then to build new uh, branches or do new market analyses and create an infrastructure. It already exists. And these have already existed for a long time and they are well established in the appropriate locations and uh, purchases can be made of products or services uh, through other intermediaries and have access to financial services. 
So facilitate, to facilitate the carrying out of financial operations, which are uh, basic and daily. Things that we usually do at the branch banks or ATMs or places where we can deposit uh, automatically. But here we can also do it in a very simple way. Once again, these may be bank users or customers as such who have accounts with one of these banks or uh, individuals who do not have an account with the bank. Then to be, to be a mechanism of financial inclusion in zones where access is difficult. In order to grow those points of contact, we need to consider a going to zones where it would be difficult at the moment to open up new branches, but we could very rapidly include these areas if we allow the participation of uh, correspondent banks. Uh, we always have a uh, concern about how to penetrate and get to users as banking services. What's first, the user or the infrastructure? Well, here we take the first step to put up the banking infrastructure and bring the service closer to the customers where users can create their accounts and uh, make the access points much more available so that a user doesn't have to go all the way to a banking branch. They can uh, access their banking services through stores that are close to the place where they live. And lastly, to ensure the coverage of the financial system throughout the entire country. To not have any zone in the country or region where we have no points of contact. Now, what transactions can be carried out here? Well, utilities can be paid, power bills, uh, even taxes can be paid, or uh, school tuitions. Uh, payments can be made on loans, either personal loans or maybe a debit card or credit card payments can be made here. Uh, cash deposits can be made. Cash can be deposited in an account. And it doesn't have to be that the person doing the transaction is the account holder. It could be anybody else, particularly in certain uh, transactions we do need to have the owner of the account do it. Uh, cash withdrawals or uh, balance inquiries. Yes, because when operations are done, the payment and deposit transactions can be done by anyone by simply having the number of a card or a number of an account. It doesn't have to be the account holder who does the transaction, but to do a cash withdrawal or a balance inquiry or pay a check or open an account, it is necessary for the account holder or the interested party to be present. These operations are carried out as if it were at an ATM. The only difference is that instead of having to go to a place where there's a market, excuse me, a machine, you can go to your nearest supermarket and be helped by a live person. Throughout the country, we have different uh, businesses that can carry out this type of uh, transaction. They're usually convenience stores, pharmacies, supermarkets, even telecom uh, or telegraph companies. Telecom Telegraphs in Mexico was one of the pioneers in offering this type of service many years ago. Next year, it will be 10 years since they started offering this service. Of course, the convenience stores have had an important role to play because of their high penetration and because of the identification that users have with these uh, stores. But Drug stores and supermarkets are also a point of contact where users can go to carry out their transactions and also uh, connect in such a way that they can make their purchase of goods and services the way they usually do. The difference is that now they can do those transactions from home or points of contact that are close to home. This means that the banking industry can grow exponentially to cover the whole country. Of course, the more stores and businesses are involved in these banking services, the greater pe the penetration will be of the uh, banks and the greater 
variety of services that will be available to users. As I was saying at the beginning, what should be first, the user or the infrastructure? Well, here, every time a business, which is already a correspondent bank or a bank correspondent, it becomes um, a point of access for users and the users who are not the bank customers per se begin to draw closer and find that banks are near them and once those uh, accounts have been opened it's not necessary for the user to go back to the branch something that has already been done over the last few years it's uh, like cities 100% of major cities in Mexico have uh, correspondent banks in a study done by the Securities Exchange and Banking Commission uh, this graph was created where practically all metropolitan areas and uh, urban areas even semi-urban areas have uh, at least one bank uh, correspondent. And of course, there are some regions where this is much more complex, but it's happening anyway. And the greatest challenge today is the rural areas. We have made a progress of 31% uh, in the coverage of these people. It may sound like a low number, but actually it's a very, very significant progress to make this access available to different types of rural communities. And if a user is making payments on uh, his debit or credit cards and making deposits in an account, others will begin to see the benefits of that type of transaction and will begin to be involved themselves in uh, a, opening a, an account is a simple thing then over time you may have access to a loan or a credit card which benefits the economy of these zones and naturally these uh, financial inclusions are a watershed in the economy of these regions. In the last study, well not the last study actually, but in 2018 in a national survey uh, Something interesting came up. We see here the following data. This is a comparison of the use of branches and the use of correspondent banks. As you can see from 2012 to 2018, the use of uh, ATMs, branches, and correspondent banks is very, very similar now. But there's something important here. One is the transfer time. For an average branch, the transfer time is 21 minutes. For an ATM, 17 minutes. And for a bank correspondent, 12 minutes. So as a user, getting to uh, a correspondent bank is much simpler. It takes much less time than going to an ATM or a branch. But this means that bank correspondents are even closer than other channels. And this can be used for customers to carry out their basic transactions as an alternative to ATMs and branches. It's not that we will cease to use the traditional channels, but we do find that more and more uh, users are uh, taking advantage of correspondent banks situated closer to them. Another interesting bit of information is the cost of transportation throughout the day. We can possibly make our way to an ATM or a branch, but as we get farther away from the city, it's not quite so simple to walk to one of these places. We need to use public transportation or use our own transportation, and this involves paying the cost of gasoline. But the cost here on average is 28 pesos to get to a branch, 22 pesos to get to an ATM, and 11 pesos to get to a correspondent bank. So we're making uh, banks much more accessible to people. 
measuring from 2012 to 2018, we practically had an increase in of 10% in the usage of correspondent banks in 10 years. That's a very good number. We aren't at the point where we would like to be, of course. We'll always want more, and we'll be looking for more, but the numbers here are very interesting and show good penetration and the benefit brought to the population through these new channels of correspondent banks. Another interesting bit of information is that in rural locations, 8.1 million people have already used the services of correspondent banks. That is, as of 2018, almost double the number uh, of users as in 2012 were uh, making use of these uh, correspondent bank services. Of course, the cities are where we have the greatest penetration. Looking at the entire map of Mexico, the northern central part of the country is where we most use these different channels. The great challenge that we have is to begin to increase the number of points of access in the southern part of the country because we need to provide great focus and effort in bringing these uh, services to the southern part of the country. Though we aren't doing so poorly overall, we could certainly do better. The benefits are many. We'll talk here about just a few of them. We've already talked about nearness, as we mentioned on the graph. In 10 minutes, we can arrive at a correspondent bank around the different countries in the uh, cities in the country. Agility to make a deposit all we need, or a payment, all we need to do is what is the beneficiaries uh, or destinations information, a card number or account number, and that's and the amount to be deposited. That's all that's needed. This represents uh, agility. And businesses may opt to go to a bank branch, but every time you want to make a payment on your credit card, uh, the person uh, who is a convenience store or supermarket simply puts on the hat of the bank and represents the bank at that moment. And at that point, it's as if the user were conducting a transaction with the bank. So then we have uh, availability. Businesses that are involved as correspondent banks are linked, their services are linked to the hours, operating hours of the store. That is, if a store opens at 8 in the morning and closes at 8 in the evening, that will be the window of opportunity for a user to access, um, unlike the bank branches, which generally close a little bit earlier. Besides, these stores generally can open Saturdays and Sundays. So financial services are present even on non-business days, which is something very important. Security. You don't have to walk or travel a significant distance with a lot of cash in your pocket. You can go to the nearby convenience store and do your payments. It's, uh, it allows users to have greater safety because you go into the store to buy a product or service. And besides that, you also make a payment. Uh, it's much easier for many people to do it that way at a correspondent bank than to have to go to a bank branch. But security is very important here. And once again, the validity of the operation is the same at a convenience store or at the bank. It's not only in the issue of time, but how much does it cost you to travel uh, to a bank or an ATM? or even using public transportation. So costs are lower for the users as they're able to select a correspondent bank near them. And this is an additional benefit. Financial inclusion, last of all. 
we always tend to be looking for at this matter of the chicken or the egg. What's first, the user or the infrastructure? Well, here we're taking a step to have that banking infrastructure available to users so that they can see the benefits that there are in it and become encouraged to uh, become active in the banking system. They may have reasons of their own to not participate, but when the bank comes close to them, they have opportunities to have their own experiences, and they may later decide to open an account, get a bank card, or even apply for a loan, and they will receive these benefits. And in the future, they may begin to become more active uh, savers. And this benefits the individual as well as the country. I invite you to use these correspondent bank services. Don't forget that this channel is an opportunity of growth for customers, for banking institutions, but especially it helps the country as a whole to grow. So that's uh, what I wanted to share with you today about the importance of uh, banking correspondence. I thank you again for your time and we can still use this channel. And thank you very much. We'll move on to Q&A. Hello, everyone, once again. So we have some questions. So how easy and safe and effective is using correspondent banks? Actually, the operations done in bank in correspondent banks are very similar to the ones users may do in the normal infrastructure of banks. It may be at the branch office or ATMs. And I'm just mentioning this because of the use of cash. And practically operations, once they're done or once you make a deposit or a payment of a credit card, they are directly applied in the bank. Most of them are done online. So the user has the guarantee that their transfer has been done or transaction has been done for sure. So this is really, really safe. Another question is, what is being done in order to close the gap between the bankerization and a bigger coverage of rural and financial education? Well, the intent of this channel is being able to reach many more other contact points nationwide. This may be practically, as we mentioned, in big penetrations in the center and north. And there's also an important penetration in the southern part of the country where statistically we may have more rural areas. So part of what we're doing is to increase these contact points. And I mentioned this as an overall bank and we're enrolling much more commercial chains. And they also have an appetite in order to get enrolled with some banks and provide this type of services. Nowadays, for retailers, is also an additional benefit to draw more customers in and to provide them with a better service. And well, as we mentioned, this is also more accessible for customers, being able to make these transactions and this type of channels and it fosters their use. And part of the financial edu education is to disseminate this type of products and to show that they really work so that they can have more products and more easiness. And this can benefit their economy and the economic activities they do. Another question is, will the shops where we can make this transaction still grow? Yes, of course, there are different contact points where they can keep growing. There are two mechanisms. One of them is the organic growth of each of the shops or businesses enrolled, meaning every time there's a new shop from each of these um, chains or contact points, they're also born with this corresponding bank services. And the other one is, as of enrolling, new chains or shops. Every time that you enroll a new chain of pharmacies or convenience stores or supermarkets with one of the banks, we practically provide service for all the contact points in that chain. So the direct answer is yes, they will keep growing. 
Another question is, how does the new regulation impact or benefit correspondent banks? Well, to give you further context, on September 23rd, the Chapter 11 was updated, which is the one that regulates this type of services. It's really recent, but it focuses on streamlining the process for authorizing new correspondent banks. It also focuses on providing more safety on the operations done at the technological infrastructural level, per se. And... Uh, it also provides a bigger agility to enroll more businesses, given the fact that it's based on the type of risk of the operations. For instance, a payment per se is cataloged as a lower risk against other operations such as cash withdrawal because of the safety levels. Because when you make a payment, you actually do it with a reference number or a credit card number. However, when you're making a cash withdrawal, you need more security mechanisms such as the credit card and PIN number, and in some cases, the cardholder's ID. Um, I think there are more questions, but I think we're running out of time. So thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for listening. Once again, thank you and have a good one. Thank you so much, Luis Arellano, for that presentation. And thank you for answering all the concerns from all of our participants. Amazing.